Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another Let's Play. This time, we are going to play... Wait for... Oh, yeah, i got to set it up, of course. Do, 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 do. Nice magenta screen, huh? Wait for it. Champions of Kryn! Yes, let's play the uh, first of the Dragonlance games. <clears throat> it's actually quite a bit of fun. Um, and uh, what they did with the uh, um, game engine to make the game work uh, is also... Um, especially cool. Uh, and, and it's another one of those uh, things that, uh, you know, it's like, why didn't they do the, why didn't they include all these options in uh, Unlimited Adventures, you know? Anyway, um, the character creation, while obviously the basics are the same as, uh, um, you know, Pool of Radiance and the uh, other Forgotten Realms games, there are some significant differences. Um, in fact, I mean, it's different enough from the uh, basics to be almost as complex, if not more so, than uh, um, the uh, Buck Rogers games. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new character. And um, we have quite a few more options, uh, rather than we got, you know, normally there's just human, elf, Dwarf, half elf, gnome, and halfling. Um, we don't have halfling, and we don't have gnome. Uh, instead, we have Sylvanesty elf, Qualanesty elf, half elf, mountain dwarf, hill dwarf, kender, and human. And uh, there's a lot of differences between them. And this game is a lot more forgiving about multiclassing than the Forgotten Realms games are. Um, I, you know, I'm a lot more forgiving is kind of an understatement, in fact. But uh, uh, let's start by, uh, let's just go with the human for now. Of course, male, female. We have cleric, fighter, mage, thief, ranger, and knight. No paladin this time, but we have a knight. Let's go ahead and choose a knight. You can only be lawful good. And knight of the crown. So this game implements the uh, uh, knighthood system that uh, uh, the, the Islamic Knight that uh, uh, a lot of people are so familiar with. Uh, you also start out with uh, uh, some experience already, um, although this is only level one for uh, Knight of the Crown. Um, but you notice that uh, hit points are even higher, and that's because technically um, in first edition, Knights were supposed to start out as a fighter and then you know, change class to become a Knight of the Crown, and then you can change to become you know, Knight of the Sword and Knight of the Rose. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, basically this game just bypasses that part. Um, I'm not going to bother re-rolling stats. Let's just call them test. And, of course, you've got the, uh, usual, um, you know, combat icon creation. Um, I'm only going to go through it really briefly when I create a different character. Um... So, you know, if you're really wondering about, you know, what all the weapons look like and what colors are available and things like that, um, take a look at my Pool of Radiance character creation. Uh, this is basically the exact same. I'm not going to go through all of that again. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and say that. Okay, let's create a new character. Okay. Um, let's take a look at Kender. Uh, obviously, um, you know, a lot of people who are familiar with Dragonlance know what a Kender is. You know, they're the essentially the uh, replacement for halflings in uh, uh, Kryn. Um, and uh, they have quite a few options. They can be rangers. Uh, cleric fighter, cleric ranger, cleric thief, and fighter thief. Uh, if you're planning to take your characters through all three of the Kryn games, um, it does pay to take a look at what the level limits are for the races. Um, so for uh, Kender, um, they can gain, uh, they can get up to 5th level of Fighter, 5th level of Ranger, 12th level of Cleric, and Unlimited and Thief. So, 
basically, you know, and, and they have good thieving uh, modifications and stuff like that. So basically the uh, option is going to be either straight thief or some sort of multi-class thief, either a cleric thief or a ranger thief, uh, fighter thief. Uh, you cannot be a ranger thief, unfortunately. Um, so my recommendation is that if you're going to choose multi-class, um, you know, obviously it's either going to be thief or cleric thief. Um, since you can't get up to 7th level in fighter, there's no real point in making a fighter thief. Uh, you'll get some advantages early on, but then after that it's just pointless. And they'll just be gaining levels very, very slowly. So the uh, good choice is a cleric thief. Um, I'm going to go through the cleric options with a different uh, uh, race, so I'm just going to go choose thief. Uh, let's choose neutral good. And uh, I'm not going to bother re-rolling stats. Uh, you start out at level 2 with less experience than uh, the knight has. Uh, but, yeah, that's okay. Okay. Test. Okay, so the first difference is that you have a new head type that has the uh, um, infamous top knot. Um, and you also have... Uh, the, there we go, specific Kupak uh, icon, uh, weapon icon that is, you know, of course, well known for Kender. That's the only Kender weapon. Um, I don't know if first edition had more Kender weapons, but I know that they introduced a lot of them in second edition. Uh, but Kupak is always the most infamous one, of course. Um, so let me just exit. Yeah, that's fine. No, I'm not going to save it. Okay, uh, create new character. Okay, you got... Oh, and I should point out that uh, um, Kender, uh, either cl either uh, um, gender can max out strength in 16 and wisdom in 16. So they're never going to be good fighters and they're never going to be good clerics. Uh, they get a plus two bonus to dexterity and minus one strength. But... Um, yeah, so obviously they're always going to be, you're always, always going to want to have them at least partially a thief. Uh, you've got Mountain Dwarves and Hill Dwarves. Uh, they have unlimited advancement in Fighter, but not, they don't have unlimited advancement in anything else. So, again, the, the always popular uh, Dwarf Fighter Thief is slightly less viable in this case. Um, yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate, um, but Hill Dwarves can uh, max out 10th level in Cleric, 8th level in Ranger, and 10th uh, level in Thief, and like I said, unlimited advancement in uh, um, Fighter. Mountain Dwarves have unlimited advancement in Fighter. As I said, 10th level in Cleric, 8th level in Paladin, which you can't actually choose in this game, and 8th level advancement in Thief. So, if you're going to choose the Fighter Thief option, then you'd probably want to choose um, Hill Dwarf. If you're going to choose a Fighter Cleric, then you'd, either one is viable. Uh, half Elves have unlimited advancement in Cleric and Thief, so you could make a Cleric Thief, but again, you probably are going to want to go with a Kender Thief. So, uh, um, you know, it's up to you, of course. Um, they can gain 9th level in Fighter, 11th level in Ranger, and 10th level in Knight and Mage. Um, so again, they're not, it's not, you know, unless you're willing to sacrifice a, a maximum level in uh, you know, unlimited advancement in something, um, yeah, probably want to go with something like a fighter cleric or, or something like that. Since you don't really need more than one thief. Uh, and then uh, um, the elves. The elves are going to be your go-to characters for pretty much everything. Uh, except for a knight, of course. Uh, and, and any sort of single class character. Uh, except thief. Um... Sylvanesti Elves can't have... Well, both have unlimited advancement in Ranger, unlimited advancement in Cleric, and unlimited advancement in Mage. Um, Qualanesti Elves have unlimited advancement in Thief. Sylvanesti Elves can max out 10th level in Fighter, 12th level in Paladin, 
and Qualamus the elves can max out 14th level and fighter. So, you know, again, you've got a lot of options if you're choosing, uh, um, you know, any sort of elf. Um... If you're going to have anything that's a, a fighter, a multi-class fighter something or other, then you're probably want to go, you're going to want to go with a, um, a, a Qualanisty Elf because they got the um, 14th level maximum as opposed to the 10th level. Um, but of course, a, a Ranger multi-class would, would also be very beneficial, although you can't get unlimited advancement. I mean, you can't choose um, a Ranger Mage, I don't believe. Yeah, you, you only have Cleric Ranger as an option. Otherwise, it's uh, Cleric Fighter Mage, um, or Fighter Mage, Fighter Mage Thief, that kind of thing. So, let's, uh, let's choose a Cleric uh, Ranger. And here you have a choice of, you can pick the, you pick the god that you want to choose, uh, that you want to uh, follow. And again, this is one of the things that I, I would have really liked them to have implemented in uh, um, some of the Forgotten Realms games. Um, you can follow Paladine, Majir, Kiri Jolith, Meshakal, Syrian, Reorx, and Shanair. And each of them has uh, um, some special spells, and some of them have special bonuses. Um, Paladine, Paladine has no special bonuses, but you get the bonus spell of protection from evil 10 foot radius. Um, personally, not really worth creating a, a, pa a cleric following Paladine. Um, Majir, uh, you turn undead as you're as if you were two levels higher, so that's pretty handy. And they get the extra bonus spell of silence, fifteen foot radius. Uh, Kiri Jolith has the uh, bonus of a plus one Thaco. And uh, they get the extra spell, Detect Magic. So this is a useful one, especially if you're going to choose a uh, Ranger Cleric. Uh, it's nice to get that plus one bonus to attack. Um, Shockel does plus one... Uh, well, for all their healing spells, they get a plus one bonus. Uh, plus one per die. Um, it says plus one die on all healing spells, and I'm not sure exactly if that just means like... Uh, Cure Light Wounds does 1d8 plus 1, or if it means it does 2d8. I think it means 1d8 plus 1. Let me actually double check something. Do, 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 do. While I'm looking this up, um, another thing that, that I should point out is that you can't create an evil... Uh, um, can't create evil characters in this game. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't clarify it. I, I'd assume it's just like one d eight plus one kind of thing for cure light wounds. Um, and you get the uh, extra spells of charm person, remove curse, and bless. Really useful. No matter what, you want to have a cleric of Meshackle at least. No matter what else you choose. Um, Syrian, no special powers, um, but you get the extra spell burning hands. Uh, Reorks. Um, if you choose a Dwarven Cleric, you can only follow Reorks. Um, and only Dwarves get the special power of plus one Thacko. Uh, and they get no extra spells. So, like, it's kind of lame. But a plus one Thacko is nice. And Shanair, no extra spe no special powers, and you get the extra spell Charm Person. So, to be perfectly honest, um... You know, Syrian is good for, you know, if you want a little bit of extra oomph uh, in combat. Uh, Reorks, if you're taking a Dwarven Cleric, they have to be this, and it's nice to get the plus one uh, um, bonus to attack. But uh, really, my personal preference is that, you know, obviously, at least one Meshackle, and, you know, one from Bajir and Kiri Jolith, or if you're having three Clerics, one of each kind of thing, you know, however you want to do it, but definitely take one of Meshackle. And it's especially nice getting those three bonus spells. So let's choose Meshakal. And um, they also... Oops, let me uh, jump back in there for a second. Um, these four are good. You can choose a good, um, a good alignment. And these three are neutral. You have to choose a neutral alignment. 
so if you have a dwarven cleric, they're going to be you know true neutral or chaotic neutral or uh, lawful neutral or something like that. Uh, so shockle neutral good. Okay, and again, you start out with a set amount of experience, and uh, um, that sets you at uh, level one slash two for cleric ranger. Um, Rangers, of course, have uh, higher hit points, but so do clerics of good. Um, it, it's a little... It seems a little odd to me, um, but uh, one of the kind of weird things is that you have different level advancement for uh, good clerics, neutral clerics, uh, white mages, and red mages. Um, and good clerics start with 2d8 hit dice, uh, whereas neutral clerics only start with 1d8. However, um, neutral clerics advance significantly faster uh, at the beginning, but then they, they really slow down and uh, good clerics advance uh, much faster later on. So, I don't, I don't know why. And they get different... Uh, um, uh, they gain spells at different levels. Um, neutral clerics gain their uh, uh, spells a lot faster, whereas good clerics, um, like good clerics, don't get seventh level spells until their sixteenth level, whereas uh, neutral clerics get them at twelfth level. So I don't know why. It's just one of those crazy things. Uh, anyway. Let's go ahead and, yeah, keep, oops, nope, test, okay, yeah, that's fine, yep, okay, and then uh, you have the choice of mages, let's go with fighter mage, and again, if you're going to be um, a mage, if you choose, you know, one of the good alignments, you're a white robe wizard, and if you choose one of the neutral, you're a red robe ro wizard, and um, you want to have at least one of each, uh, and the reason for that is the spells that uh, you learn differ. Um, let me give you some examples. Um, for example, at second level, um, both classes get the same spells at first level. At second level, um, red mages only can learn invisibility, knock, mirror image, and strength. Uh, both can learn detect invisibility and stinking cloud, but only white robes can learn ray of enfeeblement. So really, I mean, there's some major limitations depending on what, uh, um, which you choose, and unfortunately you cannot choose a, a wizard that gets all of them. Um, but it basically boils down to, you know, you want to have one of each, uh, in particular because at third level, only red mages get haste, and you need to have haste. Um, but at the same time, white mages only, you know, only white mages get to spell magic, uh, as well as, you know, protection from evil 10-foot radius and protection from normal missiles, which aren't all that useful, but, you know, and they also only get hold, they're the only ones that get hold person. Um... White mages also only get the globes and vulnerability. Whereas when you get up to, let's see, 8th level, um, red mages really suck because the only 8th level spell they can get is power word blind. Uh, white mages get everything. So, it, it, it's kind of annoying in some respects, but uh, um, yeah, that's the uh, choices you... You, you make. And at 6th level, only red mages can get disintegrate. Um, only red mages can get uh, uh, flesh to stone and stone to flesh. So you need to have one of each. So that's really what it boils down to. And as I said, um, choosing a good alignment makes you a white robe, and choosing a uh, neutral alignment makes you a red robe. So let's do neutral good. And here, you start with 5,000 experience. You get start out a level 3 fighter and level 2 white mage. So, you know, that's always nice. 
Okay, uh, let me see if there is anything else that uh, I need to go over. Um, I don't think so. I think that's basically it for character creation. Um, a lot of the, a lot of some of these things won't really take effect. Um, like I'll go over the the moons once I actually get into the game. Um, and you'll see a little more once I get into the actual game itself as well. But uh, that's basically it. Um, and like I said, if you're going to be planning to go through um, all three games, uh, definitely take a look at the level limits that are available in uh, um, Dark Queen of Kryn and plan out your characters accordingly. So, on that note, um, I think we'll call this a video, and uh, in the next episode, I've already created my uh, characters, um, so in the next episode, I'll go ahead and add them to the party, and we'll actually start adventuring. So I'll see you in episode two.